The title of my installation is Reframing a Perceptual Paradigm. And uh, those words were carefully chosen with respect to the um, uh, inferences or the meaning that, that each one has. Uh, reframing, of course, is to take something um, and, uh, from one context, put it in another, and see if you can derive a different kind of understanding of it. Um, that, of course, relates to perception, um, and artwork is about perception. It's about how the viewer uh, responds to the visual symbols that the artist has put forth. And paradigm, um, I sort of take as a, a, an overarching um, framework in which perception becomes sort of commonized, if you will. We find a common way of dealing with how we perceive things. So put together um, using the, um, uh, the symbol of frame, uh, which is uh, germane to all museums, um, as, a, as an actual literal and um, uh, figurative element to transform perceptions, or at least provide a means by which perceptions may be transformed, and a different paradigm um, emerges. And in, that case, in this case, that paradigm relates to how people think of the Telfair Museum um, and the three entities that comprise it, the Owens Thomas House, the New Jepson Center for, for the Arts, and uh, the Telfair Academy itself. The nuts and bolts of it is I have been given what I believe to be unprecedented um, uh, opportunity to plumb the depths of the museum's collection and to uh, pick out uh, works that I feel would be uh, of interest to the general public uh, from the point of view of um, each work's own artistic merit and the relationship that one would have to the other with respect to, again, fleshing out the, uh, the substance of what the institution is about. Because from my point of view, uh, a museum's substance is based on its artistic holdings. The concept uh, really came out of uh, a desire to uh, sort of demystify the museum environment and to create a way of looking at our collections from a different perspective. One of the uh, issues we're dealing with right now is really truly understanding what our scope of collection is. You know, what is it that makes us unique in the world uh, as a museum? And so by bringing in other perspectives, bringing in other voices, our hope is that these different perspectives are going to inform our decision making as we move forward, as we, as we think about the collection goals of the future. I think the, uh, the great interest in having an artist examine the collection and work with objects from the collection rather than the staff, the curatorial staff that exists, is that artists come in with a completely different kind of vision, um, with a fresh perspective, and they haven't worked with objects for years and years like the curatorial staff have. And so they have a completely unique way of seeing these objects and a totally different vision of how to uh, combine them to create new meaning and context. Uh, once the uh, concept for the installation was, was set, um, and uh, part of that concept was having um, access to uh, works in the collection of the museum, um, unlimited access. Uh, I immediately went to uh, my recollections of the uh, painting by Julian Story behind me here, um, where as you can see, the uh, most prominent character in that painting is uh, the Black Prince, uh, for whom the painting is titled. And his um, positioning there in the context of this battle um, war, there's the intensity of that, um, his, his posture 
is very mysterious. It, you're, you're not quite sure if he's uh, the good guy, the bad guy, um, if he's uh, torn up emotionally by this battle, or if he's uh, feeling, you know, um, victorious. Um, but his posture has a lot of expressiveness about it. And so um, as I con considered other works from the collection and I'm going through the catalog, I come upon this um, uh, collage by Romare Bearden uh, done in 1979 and it's called Falling Star and much smaller than the painting behind me. Um, and the main character in his work is an African-American woman standing um, a full figure uh, facing in the opposite direction uh, and she seems to be sipping a cup of something. And so I blew up both figures to the same size and placed them facing each other and remarkably they began to dialogue right before my very eyes. Um, something about their similar postures, uh, giving each of them the same um, regard uh, they began to communicate in spite of the fact that uh, they were done nearly a hundred years apart in cultural and sociological political settings that couldn't be more different. Um, and there's stories to be told once one looks at those various holdings. And in the case of uh, the Telfair Academy, Telfair Museum of Art, um, those stories are very, very intriguing. Um, they can be looked at again from a historical point of view, uh, from a purely uh, sociological point of view, from a cultural point of view. And I try to, to um, cover as many of those bases as possible um, in a way that the viewer or the person um, uh, being exposed to this installation walks away with a completely different um, idea, a perception of what um, this academy, this institution is about. The dialogue is very much the the audience, and the you know we see the museum environment as not a passive interaction experience, uh, but uh, 
there are no sort of right answers when you enter a museum space and you're being called upon to make your make your uh, observations and make your uh, assumptions as to what the work means and such. We do some, we do do some didactic material uh, that helps elucidate sort of the stories behind the work, but I, we try to keep it as much to a minimum as possible because I think it's so important to have that experience of sort of making those associations on your own and not having it be spelled out for you. Uh, the use of the frame in, the inst in this particular installation um, was derived in part from going to, through the collection, uh, my first trip into the, the archives, and realizing how many portraits were there, uh, not all of which I found from my own personal taste to be that interesting. Um, what seemed to be of more interest to me um, was the, uh, the character and the iconographic nature of the frames in which they were placed. Uh, they really spoke to a certain um, time period. They spoke to a certain um, cultural aesthetic um, identity, um, wealth. And so framing, reframing, that shift, that bridge between the literal and the figurative um, became a, a very inspiring component that, that added to and led to the development of the, um, of the installation. Uh, obviously, I could not take frames from the collection and have the freedom to use them as I would want. So um, I, I contracted with uh, Phil Starks to make casts of frames. So we made, we made casts of two frames and I start out with uh, using that frame in, in almost kind of a pristine manner and then proceed to um, deconstruct it, to um, reconsider it as a framing element. Um, uh, at the same time using artwork from the collection in a similar manner. So framing, reframing, um, challenging uh, the normal way in which people perceive these uh, iconic elements. Well, the idea is to, uh, you know, I always look at these projects from the, uh, the end point and then work backwards. Um, I believe the uh, installation opens on the 23rd of April. Um, if I remember correctly, as of the 6th of April, the galleries are mine. Um, that gives a good two and a half weeks to actually be in there installing things. But the nature of this installation, installing work is going to be um, uh, interesting. <laughs> um, but that means that ideally by the 6th, all of the work to be created has been done. Um, and that work that I'm creating specifically for the show uh, exists on, on a number of different levels. Uh, again, a major part of which is these uh, frames and how these frames will be incorporated into the exhibition. And this will be where you guys are working. All right, very good. What do you think? Oh, elbow roll. We can do this. <laughs> <laughs> This is a really beautiful frame. I really yeah, like it is nice. Uh huh. The, I know. They, they just finished, and it's historic. It's a beautiful frame, which okay. is fine. Which is why I'm letting you use it because the finish is not original. Oh, okay. I'd like to refinish it actually. Okay. But in the meantime, you can. Uh, and so this is plaster, or how? Yeah, it's a, it's a cube. Very heavy. Oh wow. Okay. The back is even lovely. I just look at this. The carving. Wow. It's a great frame. I love it. I was really just saddened when I saw that the finish was messed up, but it works perfectly for you. Okay. Because they've ruined the finish already, so you can just do your thing. Absolutely beautiful. Okay. And voila, we're ready to pour. Here we go. It's 
one of my favorite parts about this is watching this transform. You can see it's starting to get milky now. It's starting to cloud up. Yeah, see it's starting to go. Now I can let it go. This stuff is sandable. Just take a sand, sand it down. Oh, well, I'm beginning to think that my man Phil can mold and cast just about anything. Um, these are quite, uh, quite nice. All the detail is there. All the uh, um, sculptural character is there. Uh, what's interesting is to see that um, a sense of history, uh, that sense of, um, of life, if you will, um, rendered in a material that uh, is very plastic and kind of antithetical to that character, which is an interesting kind of uh, side effect of, of doing it in this particular material. It, it stands in contrast or in conflict with uh, the original character of the frame, although the um, artistic sculptural details are there. Uh, so it, 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 it enables the uh, the idea, the concept of using these frames to, um, to begin to take on its, uh, a life of its own. I could see using these for a particular um, reference point with respect to those portraits. Uh, again, the, um, the perception that people have of, uh, of uh, the kind of work that would be displayed in frames like this. Um, so this is, this is very exciting, very exciting. Um, at this point, I'm several days into the uh, fabrication of uh, uh, some of the uh, visual components, the artistic creations that will um, be included in the installation. And this is after um, uh, dealing with logistical issues like finalizing the contract, um, uh, I believe getting a, um, a positive response to the issue of copyright uh, with respect to uh, how we can use, or I can use images um, that uh, are copyrighted and, and, and what those dynamics are. Um, so I'm, I'm forging ahead with uh, creating works that uh, uh, will sort of um, provide uh, commentary, visual commentary on, on the um, curatorial aspect of the installation. And, and they comp they're comprised of these assemblages Again, using that term uh, to, to differentiate them from collages, uh, and that, uh, as you can see, they in, involve not only uh, two-dimensional uh, images, photographs, um, objects, but three-dimensional found objects as, as well. And uh, I, I anticipate that there's going to be several of these. Uh, the exact number is not yet uh, uh, determined. Um, but so far, I've been approaching them in pairs. Uh, that is, um, I start with one based on a photographic image. Um, this was the very first one created of this series. And this primary central photograph was taken down on River Street. Uh, the tile pavements with debris in the uh, uh, scene between two tiles. And it just really struck my eye. Um, so I took that photograph several weeks ago and this initial collage or assemblage uh, was generated from that image. Um, its uh, mate has uh, another variation of that same photograph. Um, the way these are coming about is the enjoyment of this process. Um, I try not to um, put very, I try to put very little time into predetermining what the end product will look like. Uh, there's a process of uh, discovery, um, dialoguing between the various elements, uh, conversation ensues, and the only um, constraints I try to give to that conversation is that they have some relevance to uh, either the uh, collection in the Telfair, um, the physical structure of either of those th or one of those three institutions um, or Savannah in general. Um, so all of these have some reference uh, of that nature. 
Um, but the dialogue is what I find to be the most intriguing part of fabricating them, and I, I've found over the years that that's the most intriguing part of them with respect to viewers. Um, using objects that uh, are in some way designed to be rather cryptic, um, particularly when they're taken out, taken out of context, uh, so that different people can bring their own response to the sort of detailing of these, um, of these uh, specific uh, symbols. And then how one relates to the other is where one's personal um, experiences and references come into play with respect to what that dialogue um, is and what it's about whether or not it's, it makes any sense, <laughs> uh, to what extent does it, some of which I find rather amusing. <laughs> um, this uh, from a, I forget what these things are called, but they're old-timey devices. There's two images, uh, stereoscope I think they were called, and there was a contraption that you put them on, and when you look through, um, each image being slightly off, you saw them almost as three-dimensional um, pictures. Uh, so there was this individual holding these two screaming babies and his face was like, oh my God, you know, life is miserable uh, while his wife sleeps. Um, but the idea of, you know, the nanny, um, African-American women caring for children, uh, this mask seemed to be an interesting uh, uh, replacement for that father figure. Um, and then in response to that, bit of dialogue that started coming out. Uh, this photograph from a, um, a really interesting book that I've had for several years, um, the uh, almanac, I think, of uh, Negro etiquette. Uh, very interesting book. Uh, this little girl was playing with her, her white dolly. Um, this was a large doll holding two other dolls. Uh, so I envisioned what, how that dialogue could become more uh, interesting and relevant to this overall conversation if uh, I placed a portrait from one of the paintings in the collection and gave her this uh, little African figurine to be holding instead. So somehow on either side of this assemblage, these two conversations have been creating some very interesting discussion. In other words, objects that uh, one might ordinarily look at in a passing manner um, brought together in a way that you are compelled to think differently about them. Um, because again, the, the, the uh, emphasis here is reframing a perceptual paradigm. How do we look at things? How do we perceive um, objects and symbols um, in the name of art? After months and months of working on it, uh, months and months of conceiving, um, we are in the final stretch. The installation opens on April 23rd. Uh, we are currently in the process of painting the galleries, uh, which is a big step in and of itself. Um, I am currently in the studio finishing up the logistical aspects of preparing work for mounting, for transporting. The idea is to have all of the work here ready for installation as of next Monday, a week from yesterday, uh, the 13th, and to spend all of next week um, doing what the work is ultimately all about, which is uh, finding how it fits within the gallery as, a, um, uh, as an installation. And that difference is, of course, rather than simply work placed on the wall, uh, how work exists within the space and people move through that space is, um, is paramount to the uh, success of, of the project.
There's aspects of uh, history that um, are overshadowed, um, that have been left uh, unspoken to, or if they're spoken to, perhaps not sufficiently. Um, you know, uh, I think vindication comes from finally, you know, seeing those things brought from underneath, from out of the shadows and brought into the light of day and placed in a respectful manner next to those things that, that sociological um, uh, conditions have told us are more valid and more worthy. Um, I don't look to uh, give any one of these um, uh, elements more validity than the other. I just would like to make them equally um, enigmatic, <laughs> equally uh, worthy of one's um, consideration. And you can't do that in an isolated way. You have to bring them together uh, in order for that, uh, for that respectableness to be um, accomplished. One thing that Jerome Meadows said when he uh, uh, was talking about this exhibition was how interesting it was to him to go through the various pieces that belonged to the Telfair that hadn't seen the light of day for years and years. And he said these works of art were telling him that uh, we want to get out and be seen because the raison d'etre of, of a picture is to be seen. And one of the uh, works of art that falls into that category that's particularly interesting to me as Mary Telfer's biographer is this painting of Mary Magdalene. It was purchased by Mary Telfer in 1851 on our second trip to Europe in Florence. Uh, the dealer told her that it was uh, probably 100 years old, so it's probably a, a mid-18th uh, century uh, painting. Uh, and it was uh, hung in the Telfair mansion and was a gift, one of her gifts to the uh, Telfair Museum. She didn't have many uh, works of art, but this was one that she loved and one that we still have in the collection. And now, after years in the dark and seeing the light of day, I think we're a very history-laden institution here at the Telfair. We are the oldest museum in the South, and um, having Jerome work with these objects allows us to, to bring a fresh perspective to pieces that have been seen, for the most part, in a single context within this institution. And so for Jerome to take, for instance, objects from the collection that is typically shown here at the Academy, objects that are typically shown at the Jepson Center, which are more contemporary, and then pieces of furniture and more functional objects from the Owens Thomas House, and to combine them um, in completely unique ways, that creates new context for these works and, and gives them um, a fresh power. You realize that it is about communication, particularly these assemblages, the narrative quality. So putting it out there and you know, seeing people spend more than you know, the amount of time that a commercial flashes on your TV in front of your work um, and really studying it and getting into it and, and either walking away, you know, again, um, rankled <laughs> or inspired, uh, but having stood there and, and been drawn in. Um, that's, that's a successful piece for me. Mm -hmm.